Good morning and welcome back to the 300 bird challenge. We're trying to see 300 birds before the end of the year. We're also still in Florida. We're in Key West heading out of the Keys today, but starting in Key West and we are at Fort Zachary, right Sarah? Yep. We're going to see if we can find any birds here. There's been some sightings of some shorebirds. Anyway, we'll be back in a second. Okay guys, as I mentioned, we're in Key West, starting at Fort Zachary this morning. We're going to be heading north and we're going to stop at the Botanical Gardens after this. We'll kind of brief stop here first because they don't open until 10 o'clock, but there's been some interesting sightings reported there, so we're definitely going to check that out on our journey north through the Keys. Fort Zachary Taylor Historic State Park is on the tip of Key West and it features a beach, a few small wooded areas and a fort. We made our way through a picnic area, past the juvenile white ibis with some dark patches of plumage, towards the beach. We were on the lookout for any shorebirds that we could add to our count, now sitting at a healthy 195. Unfortunately, we didn't get the shorebird windfall that we were hoping for, but we did see a least turn landing on some rocks out in the water. And we also got distant views of a sandpiper. Once we got a little bit closer to it, we could then discern that it was a spotted sandpiper, which, after a while, came closer to us again onto the rocky shore. We returned into the wooded areas since the shorebirds let us down, hoping for some perching birds instead. I think we've seen a palm warbler in every video so far that we've made in Florida, and this video is no exception, here he is. Also a faded looking prairie warbler, and terrible views of the underside of a warbler. I think this is a red start. We didn't have much time to explore near the fort because we'd focused earlier on those shorebirds, but we did come across an extremely active and vocal northern mockingbird. This mockingbird had an impressive repertoire of songs, and it would also display by flying acrobatically up from a small tree before landing back down in the same spot again. Okay, Fort Zachary seemed a little bit quiet to us, but we maybe didn't hit the best parts of the park. We didn't have time to see all of it. Decent looks at spotted sandpipers, but that's about it. We are out of time because we want to go to the botanical gardens. There's been some interesting sightings there, just want to kind of check that out, so that's where we're going next. Stay tuned, back in a sec. We drove on to the Key West Tropical Forest and Botanical Garden. These gardens are just a few minutes away from Fort Zachary Taylor, but we'd taken our time getting here because the gardens don't open until about 10am. We were keen to visit because there'd been some rare birds recently sighted. Okay, we've come to the botanical gardens. Main reason being, it's supposed to be quite good for unusual birds. Um, recent sightings are piratic flycatcher, which is I think from the Bahamas, and a pearly-eyed thrasher has been seen a few times, albeit not since the 16th. We're gonna see if we can find that or anything else that crops up for us. We searched around the area that the thrasher had been reported in for ages, and we weren't the only people looking for it either. It was another pretty poor stop for us as far as birds are concerned. Plenty of cat birds, morning doves too, grackles, cardinals, and of course, palm warblers, but nothing more exciting than that. I did finally get a curly-tailed lizard on camera, been looking for one of those for a while, and a couple of butterflies too. I'd been chasing zebra longwings all vacation. They rarely land, but I did finally get this one on camera. Despite our search, we couldn't figure out where all the birds were hiding. Oh well, stick with us in this video. It can only get better, right?
Unfortunately, nothing really very extraordinary at the Botanical Gardens. That's not to say that it's not normally a great place. It just seems to be a bit quiet on the birding front this morning. We're on a bit of a push schedule. What's on for the rest of today, Sarah? Mainly just heading to Miami, but with a potential stop at Key Largo Botanical Hammock. We'll see if we have time for that. Hopefully we do. In the meantime, let's take a quick break. We'll be back after this. Welcome back. We pushed our way through the Florida Keys along the overseas highway, but we decided to give up for the day. It was humid and the birding had been slow all morning. So fast forward to the next morning and maybe some better birding, yeah? Hi guys, so after leaving the Botanical Gardens, which didn't really work out for us, but I'm not saying it's a bad location, just a bad day, we have come to Frog Pond Wildlife Management Area, Lucky Hammock. That's a mouthful, isn't it? It's actually the next day we decided to take a bit of an afternoon off yesterday, and so we are at the beginning of a new day. So far, it's been worth coming here because we've seen a red shouldered hog. Lucky Hammock is back onto the Florida mainland near Homestead, itself on the outskirts of Miami. Right away, we heard the call of a scissor-tailed flycatcher, and we got super excited. Scissor-tailed flycatchers show up in this particular location, but are otherwise not typically found in Florida. They're more of a Texas bird. Unfortunately, it never showed for us. Back near the woods, a northern perula. Lots of cardinals on our trip, though I haven't really shown them too much since they're so common both in Florida and Ontario, where we live. We spent a while watching this bird, clearly a large flycatcher. We wondered if it was a western kingbird. They do show up in southern Florida, more commonly in the winter months than late April, but again, this particular location at Lucky Hammock seems to be a bit of an anomaly, because western kingbirds do show up here quite frequently. Anyway, new bird for the year, finally. A white-eyed vireo as we continued to circle the woods. White-eyed vireo, I think. Okay, we saw a few bits and pieces in there. Um, a couple of frustrations. Cedar waxwings, but I didn't get a good enough shot of them, so I'm not going to count those. But it is a bird that we still need, but we can get those in Ontario back home too. We're fairly sure we heard the call of a scissor-tailed flycatcher, which would be an awesome bird to see but it never really showed for us. We just heard it, we didn't see it, and we're not 100% sure. But it has been sighted here. We're seeing reports of that on eBird. But it is time for us to move on now. Sarah, what's our next stop? Uh, well, we're going to Everglades National Park again, but this time we're heading into the south end. Um, our next stop will be Ernest F. Co. So uh, as we head out of here along this kind of tarmac pathway, I think you can see it on the camera with the red shoulder, the red shouldered hawk is up on the line, so let's take one last look at him before we head further into the Everglades. Back on the road again, join us in a moment as we enter the Everglades National Park. The Everglades consists of a large chunk of southwestern Florida, an environment of tropical wetlands where you can find alligators, lizards, some funky insects, and hopefully some new birds to help push along our challenge. Our journey into the park would begin at the Everglades Co. Visitor Center before taking the main park road towards some of the trailheads. On our way, this coyote ran out along the road. We continued having decided to begin at the Mahogany Hammock Trail. Okay, so in terms of the ecosystem at the Everglades, it is mainly made up of this grassy type of marsh, which is also known as the Everglades Prairie. Right now we are coming up to the tail end of the dry season, so there's less than a foot of water right now, and that will get even lower by the beginning of June. And then where most of the animals are found are in these tree islands or hammocks where 
there is higher ground that stays dry during the wet season and also more um, plentiful vegetation with more feed in it so things with more nutrients and almost all of the water from these marshes is fed from one place right yeah so almost all of the water comes from lake okeechobee so it flows down through the everglades um, the ground underneath is porous limestone so that's why it can't be drained it just keeps coming and being absorbed and more gets pulled in from the lake Hi everyone and welcome to the Everglades. We are on the Mahogany Hammock Trail. The eBird sightings looked promising for this one, although I do know that there are a couple of popular trails up by Royal Palm. We may do those ones later because that's not to say we won't see anything there, but we'll begin the day here, see what we can find on this trail. Mangrove cuckoo? <laughs> Maybe that's pushing our luck a little bit. It's a pretty uh, rare bird, but it is found in this area. so. Ah, you know, we might hit the jackpot and let's see what happens. Once we were inside the hammock, the tree cover was dense and birds were pretty tough to see. We managed to pick out this American red start and a little further along, we also saw a black-throated blue warbler. As well as catbirds and cardinals aplenty. Okay, so far a handful of different warblers, black-throated blue, um, Sarah pished, like pish, 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 made that kind of sound, and surprise, surprise, a common yellow throat came out, probably one of the easiest birds to convince to come out with a pishing sound, but that is a new bird for the year, so that adds to our count. Uh, what else? American Red Start, hearing white-eyed vireos almost on every corner of this boardwalk. Um, Catbirds, Cat cardinals. cardinals. There was one of the warbler as well that I'm blanking on. But yeah, um, just the yellow throat so far that's a new bird, but we'll keep going around this boardwalk. The hammock felt like quite a mysterious place, filmed with who knows what. So I just asked if we could uh, rest on a bench for a moment and uh, take in the sounds and sights. And then I saw something yellow hanging from a tree and I thought, is that some kind of branch? It's a bit windy or some kind of uh, you know, tree fruit. No, it's a snake. We saw a few other funky creatures as we finished up the trail. This eastern pond hawk dragonfly is quite common and can be found as far north as Ontario. And this regal Dana, which was a new dragonfly for me, as this one only normally reaches about as far north as the Carolinas. This green anole decided to do a few push-ups to try to intimidate us. Well, it worked, because we moved on to have lunch at the Flamingo restaurant, which is next to the Guy Bradley Visitor Centre, behind which we had an awesome wildlife sighting. Stay tuned to find out. Sometimes there are sightings of manatees in this water. We didn't see any at first, but later, after lunch, they showed up. This was pretty cool. We'd never seen manatees before. The West Indian manatee can be found around the east coast of the US and the Gulf of Mexico, as well as into the Caribbean. These are a specific subspecies of manatee called the Florida manatee, and they are critically endangered. We tried walking a nearby trail, but it wasn't great. We've walked a little bit of the Guy Bradley Trail near the Flamingo Visitor Centre, but it hasn't shown up too much for us. We saw a spotted sandpiper again, doing his little boogie on the beach. And uh, great looks at a great crested flycatcher. And then just a few commons, like uh, Northern Cardinal, that kind of thing but some interesting looks at some insects. Otherwise, I think we're turning around at this point and we will head to one of the other better known trails. Um, are we going back to near the beginning, maybe? Yeah, maybe some marsh overlooks on the sides of the road in between here and there. Yeah, so our plan is to head back to the kind of entrance-ish area, but if there's anything interesting on the way, we'll stop off, because we did notice a couple of pull-offs as we were driving in. 
We also saw a pair of red-bellied woodpeckers, one sticking its tongue out at us. How rude. <coughs> We turned back and started to move back towards the entrance of the Everglades, spotting this Florida softshell turtle at the side of the road on the way, and another side of the road sighting, initially flushed from the ground, this eastern meadowlark then settled into a distant tree. This is another new bird for the year. It's around about midday, so it's getting quite hot and humid, but we're going to try the Anhinga Trail anyway to see if anything crops up here for us, whether it be birds, alligators, or otherwise. Let's take a look. This is one of the more popular trails, so we didn't expect to see anything too fancy, but good looks at this hunting Anhinga. And this one drying its feathers on the shore. We also saw a couple of alligators which were gaining the interest of most visitors here. The trail is a fairly short loop and it didn't take too long to complete. The only other things that we saw were a couple of double-crested cormorants and a few funky looking fish. This long beast is a Florida gar. Before we continue this video, I thought that now, while we're about halfway through the trip, it might be a good time to show you what we have covered so far. So, if you've been following along, you'll know that we began in the Tampa Bay area, moved down the Gulf Coast, through the western edge of the Everglades, and then into the Florida Keys, with a day trip to the Dry Tortugas. We then drove back up through the Keys and are now into the Everglades. So as you can see, we are basically moving counterclockwise around Florida. So maybe you can guess some of the places we might go next if you're a local. Welcome back as we enter a shopping area in Homestead, Florida. Welcome everyone to suburban Miami. We've come to just outside of a shopping mall alongside a kind of mucky um, canal here. So we led to believe that under what they call a turnpike here, what I would call an undercarriage um, or an underpass, there is supposed to be a colony of cave swallows, which is a Caribbean or Caribbean uh, bird species. So we're hoping to pick that up. It is countable according to the ABA in this area of Florida. So we are allowed to count it. Hopefully we can find it, there's a lot of construction going on as well. So we found the cave swallows, but because they rarely land, it was a bit of a struggle to catch them on camera as they flew past. And the next thing we knew, we were being ushered away from the area by a security worker. Sarah's a bit more diplomatic than I am, so I let her deal with it. Thankfully, upon review, we did get a brief bit of footage and a photo that is fairly diagnostic. You can just make out the chestnut coloured patch on the head of the bird and a larger chestnut patch on the rump. Before we were kicked off this canal area, we also sighted some Muscovoy ducks with young. These birds can be found domesticated throughout North America and are normally not countable on a bird list, but lucky for us, according to the American Birding Association, these birds are countable in Florida as they are considered naturalized here, so this goes down as a lifer. Despite getting kicked off the canal area, we had one more stop in mind for the day, in South Miami. Well, we just experienced our first birding misdemeanor, as Sarah called it. We were looking at the cave swallows, I got some footage, it's not the best. I tried to get a more kind of, um, what's that word? Diagnostic. Like a diagnostic photo of them. I'm not sure if they turned out, but anyway, we're counting it. We then got told to shift it by some security people. We didn't realize we were trespassing. We were stood on a canal bank. There was construction behind us in a roped off area, but they asked us to leave. And uh, I let Sarah deal with that because she's a little bit more diplomatic than I am. So we left. We've driven about an hour north through Miami and we've come to a small parkette. 
on Miller Road called Brewers Park. There are supposed to be a number of different parrot and parakeet species here. We did see some fly over. We're hoping that they'll come a little bit closer and get some footage of them. They are countable. Um, in the meantime, we've seen a green heron. It's another new bird for the year. It's not an uncommon one, but we've seen it. A uh, yellow crowned night heron is flying around and a few other little bits and pieces like that. But we're going to hold out for a bit longer, see if we can get eyes on some parrots, parakeets. We staked out the small parquet for a while. A common gallignon swam by as we waited. And yet another palm warbler from the dozens of palm warblers we'd already seen so far in Florida. Another young birder told us he'd seen yellow chevron parakeets, so that's likely what flew over us earlier, but we didn't get them on camera so can't count them. Okay, so we found some blue and yellow macaws up in a tree. There's two of them kind of making a bit of a noise. We are not sure if they are countable. Sarah is looking that up right now on the ABA birding list, which is what we go with for our bird count. No, they're not. They're not countable. Oh well, it's still, <laughs> it's still a cool bird to see, um, but not countable for our list. But hey, a couple of macaws, interesting. They are, they appear to be wild. Yeah. So there is, there is a breeding population in Miami uh, that escaped in the 80s, so kind of surprised they're not on the list given some of the other things that are. Um, we did also get hints that yellow chevron parakeets have been in the neighborhood. Uh, haven't seen those yet, but those are cannibal. Yeah, so we'll stick around a little bit longer, see if we can find any more of these slightly exotic birds that hopefully are countable. In the meantime, these ones aren't. We'll keep looking. Despite not being countable, it was cool to see these birds living as wild in Miami. We hung around a little longer, but hunger was calling and the light was beginning to fade. Okay guys, I think we're gonna call it. We did get those uncountable macaws. We've also seen Muscovoy ducks. We have been to the Everglades. We have seen a Western Kingbird. We've been on all kinds of adventures and it's all been topped off with being done in for trespassing. So there's always that as well. End of this video, but we do have more coming from Florida. Sarah, we're heading generally north and what kind of places are we gonna hit in the future? Yeah. So tomorrow we are heading into some of the interior wetlands and on our way to Jupiter to potentially pick up some more seabirds. So stay tuned for that guys. In the meantime, thanks for watching this video. Please hit the like button. People need to comment too, right? Yep. Leave us a comment. The like will help other people find the channel. If you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon will give you notifications of new videos. You can also follow us on social media. Those icons will be up on the screen shortly too. Thanks for watching guys. We will see you soon. Happy birding. Bye for now. Bye.